So in previous lectures, we learned how to solve a linear system through Gaussian elimination. In this one, I'm going to teach you how to compute the inverse of an n by n matrix through Gaussian elimination. Just keep in mind that it is often useful to represent a matrix as a sequence of column vectors. So a matrix, if you have a matrix, you can just regard it as a bunch of column matrix. That is, if I have three columns, let's say V1, that is 1 minus 1, 4, V2, that is 608, and V3, which is 5, 3, and 7, right? We can form A by stacking those columns one next to the other as A, that is V1, V2, V3, which is, let's copy V1 over here, 1 minus 1, 4, V2, 608, and V3, 5, 3, and 7, right? Why is this useful? Well, first of all, if you're multiplying two matrices, let's say A, B, you can represent B as the same way we did here with the A, column B1, B2, down to Bn, and hence the resulting matrix could be expressed as a matrix where in the first column we have A times B1, in the second column we have A times B2, down to the last column where we have A times Bn, right? Now why is this all useful? It turns out that using this representation over here, we can develop a method for the computation of the inverse of A. We can obtain A inverse using this representation. How? Well, you can solve N linear equations of the form. So if I replace B by X, let's say we have A X matrix that is, I don't know, let's represent it as such, A x1 column, x2 column, down to xn column, which is again ax1, ax2, down to axn, right? So the question here is, given this representation, how do you solve for a inverse? Well, keep in mind that x here is unknown. If you're given a and you say, oh, my x is unknown but of the same size as a, then how do I find x? Well, that's a nice question. And the way you can do that is by remembering that the definition of the inverse of a, if x were to be a inverse, then x must satisfy ax equals to identity, right? That means that this guy over here should be identity. Well, the identity looks like this, 1, 0, with all zeros, then a 0, 1, with all zeros, till the last column, which is all zeros, except the last entry, which is 1. So if I'm solving for any axi, let's say the ith column, then we get that axi vector should be all zeros, except for 1 and its ith entry, right? So that means that we should equate ax1 to the first column here, that is ax1 is 1 with all zeros, ax2 is 0, 1, then all zeros, ax3 is 0, 0, 1, then all zeros, down to the last column that is axn is all zeros except 1 in its last entry. So what are we doing here? We're solving n linear system of equations, right? The first one being this one, the second one being this one, till the last one being this one. Which means that we can also form an augmented matrix for this n linear system problem. How? Well, all I have to do is have a over here, a11, down to a1n, and an1, down to ann, and on the right hand side I stack the B vectors, that is 1, 0, all zeros, and 0, 1, as such. And after we get this augmented matrix, we will row reduce the coefficient matrix to upper triangular form. So the same way that we did in the previous lecture, we reduce this guy. We try to get an upper triangular form. So U over here, that stands for upper triangular, 
then we get a matrix here B that will help us to find the inverse of A. Well, there's an easier method for that. Instead of having to do this complicated thing, we're going to do something easier. So we're going to perform row reduction until this guy over here is the identity matrix. So the guy on the left, which is also I, we're going to perform elementary row operations such that the matrix on the left is the identity. And hence, you get the right-hand matrix to be the inverse of A. As simple as that. This one is way easier than this. Okay, so let me give you an example. Okay, so let's invert this matrix. Let's first start by the augmented matrix, placing A on the left side and the identity on the right side. So let's start by trying to null this guy out by placing an R2, R2 minus R1, right? So the first and third rows remain the same, whereas the second row becomes 1 minus 1 is 0, 3 minus 0 is 3, 0 minus 2 is minus 2, 0 minus 1 is minus 1, 1 minus 0 is 1, and 0 minus 0 is 0. Let's perform another operation to null two out that is achieved by replacing r3 by r3 minus 2r1. So the first and second rows remain the same and the third row becomes 0 1 1 and minus 2 0 and 1 right. Now let's try to null this guy out by replacing r3 by r3 minus 1 over 3 r 2, right? For that, the first and second rows remain the same, and the last row becomes, so 0 minus third 0 is 0, 1 minus third 3 is 0, 1 minus third minus 2 is 5 over 3, minus 2 minus third minus 1 is minus 5 over 3, 0 minus third 1 is minus 1 over 3, and 1 minus third 0 is 1. Now we will try to achieve the identity matrix. We'll start by the last row and note that the last row of the identity is 0, 0, 1. So how can I achieve a 0, 0, 1 over here? It's simply by multiplying by 3 over 5 or dividing by 5 over 3. That is, instead of R3, we will put 3 over 5 times R3. What do we get? The first and second rows remain the same, so 1, 0, 2 by 1, 0, 0, and 0, 3, minus 2 by minus 1, 1, and 0. The last row becomes 0, 0, 1, minus 1, minus 1 over 5, and 3 over 5, right? Now we will try to null minus 2 so that we could get a 0, 1, 0, right? How do we do that? Well, instead of R2, you can place R2 plus 2 R3. Right? That said, the first and third rows remain the same. So we start 0 plus 2 times 0 is 0. 3 times 3 plus 2 times 0 is 3. And minus 2 plus 2 times 1 is 0. Minus 1 plus 2 times minus 1 is minus 3. 1 plus 2 times minus 1 over 5 is 3 over 5. And 0 plus 2 times 3 over 5 is 6 over 5. Now we try to make this guy a 1 so that we achieve the second row of the identity matrix. How can we do that? This is, this is simply achieved by replacing R2 by 1 over 3 R2, right? So the first and third rows remain the same and the second row becomes 0, 1, 0 and minus 3 times 1 over 3 is minus 1 3 over 5 times 1 over 3 is 1 over 5, and 6 over 5 times 1 over 3 is 2 over 5. Now we try to null this guy out. How do we do that? This is simply achieved by replacing R1 by R1 minus 2 R3 so that we get, so the second and third rows remain the same. And instead of R1, we're going to put R1 minus 2 R3, so 1 minus 2 times 0 is 1, 0 minus 2 times 0 is 0, 2 minus 2 times 1 is 0, 1 minus 2 times minus 1 is 3, 0 minus 2 times minus 1 over 5 is 2 over 5, and last but not least, 0 
minus 2 times 3 over 5 is minus 6 over 5. So this side is the identity matrix, this guy is I, and this guy is the inverse of A, A inverse. So we conclude that A inverse is 3, 2 over 5, minus 6 over 5, minus 1, 1 over 5, 2 over 5, and minus 1, minus 1 over 5, and 3 over 5, okay? Now let's do one other interesting example that shows us that not every matrix could be inverted. So an example on that is a 3 by 3 matrix where it has the following entries. Let's start by laying down the augmented matrix, so A on the left and the identity on the right. We start by nulling this guy out. So for that, instead of R2, we put R2 minus R1. So the first and third rows remain the same. So 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 minus 2 is minus 2. 1 minus 3 is minus 2. 0 minus 1 is minus 1. 1 minus 0 is 1. And 0 minus 0 is 0. Likewise, we're going to null this guy out. So R3 is replaced by R3 minus 3R1, right? That said, the first and second rows remain the same. So we start 3 minus 3 times 1 is 0. 4 minus, minus 3 times 2 is minus 2. And 7 minus 3 times 3 is also minus 2. 0 minus 3 times 1 is minus 3. 0 minus 3 times 0 is 0 and 1 minus 3 times 0 is 1 right now we try to null this guy out the minus 2 this is achieved by simply replacing r3 by r3 minus r2 so the first and second rows remain the same so we start 0 minus 0 is 0 minus 2 minus minus 2 is 0 same as here minus 3 minus minus 1 is minus 2 0 minus 1 is minus 1 and 1 minus 0 is 1 but we get a rows of all zeros this means that the system that we're solving is inconsistent and hence while you're inverting a matrix you can only conclude one thing that a is singular what does that mean it means that a inverse does not exist okay so in this lecture we talked about how to invert a matrix using the Gaussian elimination process. So to compute the inverse, we attach the n columns of the identity matrix to form an augmented matrix as such. Then we reduce the coefficient matrix portion to form an identity matrix on the left-hand side, and hence we obtain the inverse of A on the right-hand side. Now, as is the case of linear systems, we have two cases. The first case where you solve for the inverse and you achieve the identity on the left-hand side with no problem whatsoever. That is, we don't have an all-zero row. And hence, the matrix A is non-singular, so its inverse is given on the right side of the augmented matrix. The other case is while you're performing the elementary row operations, you might stumble upon a case where all the rows are zeros, and hence you could only conclude that A is singular, and hence the inverse of A does not exist. Okay? So that's about it. If you found this lecture beneficial, please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, just leave a comment down in the comment section below and I'll make sure I'll get to it as soon as possible.